Tonight, the appointment of a new chairman of the Electoral Commission is raising political temperatures as anxiety continues to build up over who succeeds Dr. Kwejo Avarijan. While the opposition New Patriotic Party holds the view that the president should embark on a broader consultation to ensure anyone who is named as EC chairman is accepted by all, the ruling NDC says that process is already underway. And in any case, the president alone has the prerogative of who to select or not to select. But should that be the approach? Is the role of EC chairman a big deal? Can the Electoral Commission function without a chairman? This is today's Big Story with me, Stephen Henty. So should it be the current deputy chairman, Amadou Sule, Dr. Emmanuel Akwete, Dr. Emmanuel Bombande, or Justice Jamefe? These are some of the names that have come up for possible replacement for Dr. Kwejo Afarijan, uh, the current chairman who is on leave pending retirement. But does it really matter who heads the Electoral Commission if the structures their work? The position New Patriotic Party is concerned. A candidate might be chosen without broader consultation with all the political actors. Let's quickly get onto the phone line and speak to some of the political actors. Former chairman of the MPP, Peter Mark Maino, is joining us now uh, for a discussion on this. Good evening, sir, and thanks for your time. Good evening. So what really are the concerns of the MPP? Well, I think that the concern of MPP is the concern of Ghanaians. Ghanaians want peaceful elections. Ghanaians want a non-violent, intimidatory election. Mm. Ghanaians want elections whose outcome, both the winner will be congratulated and the loser accepting it for peace to prevail, for the country to have the development it, de it deserves. Mm. So MPP is not in isolation. I think the concerns that we are raising are, raised, are concerns that will up the ante mm. as far as democracy is concerned. And everybody right. knows the role of political parties and elections in any mm. democracy. But, Mr. Uh, Bakmenu, these no concerns, I, I beg to interrupt a bit, these concerns, do they uh, hinge? on the election or appointment of a particular person as chairman of the Electoral Commission? Very well so, because, you see, we need somebody who has the ability to say, no, this one, it will bring ties. Mm. Somebody who will not pander to any political party, either in power or in opposition, mm. but to what will bring the right thing. The right thing, I mean, fairness, transparency, inclusiveness, accuracy, credibility. These are the things that we expect. Okay? Mm -hmm. We don't expect that somebody will come on board who will not be able, as it were, to marshal the environment to be satisfactory, to be conducive. Now, when I say the environment, I'm talking about the electoral laws, the guidelines and processes, mm -hmm. the environment in which the electoral uh, 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 the electoral environment itself, then you may talk about the, the, the electoral integrity, the election day logistics, the counting and tabulation process, the introduction of technology, all these. You need somebody who would measure to these tasks. And I believe that we have people who are prepared to serve the good public of Ghana, but will not be parochial or self service so, Mr. Mr. McMenu, you, you sound like you have somebody in particular in mind who you prefer to become the, the next electoral commissioner. Do you have any preferences? I don't have any, anybody in mind. But what I do, and I have been, I have been advocating for, is that the Council of State, who is supposed to advise the president, mm. should do or expand his horizon as far as consultations are concerned. Then, when they send any information to the president, any advice, the president must deepen that consultation the Council of States must have already undertaken. 
with extra consultation. So what do you mean That's by extra consultation? You mean that the president should be going from party to party consulting the leadership oh, the, of the all the political has a lot parties? Of people he's working with. So I don't expect the president to sit in a car and go from party to party. He can call, send a memo to not only political parties, other stakeholders, civil society groups, associations, uh, chief imam, etc. Right. Uh, 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 Christian associations, etc. For their input. Mr. McQueen, we'll, we'll have you hold briefly where, so that we can hear from the NDC as well in the discussion. Uh, let's hear from the national organizer of the ruling NDC, uh, Kofi Adams. He's joining us. Uh, Ms. Adams, good evening. Good evening. So are you able to tell us what kinds of consultations have gone on towards choosing a successor for Dr. Farid Jan? No, I'm not aware of... Uh, uh, consultations, but what I do know is that the constitution is very clear on appointment of such higher officers. Mm. And this is not the first time that as a country we have had to appoint people to such positions. We have been appointing persons to very high sensitive positions and have always followed the constitution. The appointment of the chief justices of this country uh, the appointments of members of the Electoral Commission mm. as commissioners. We have always done it right from President Rawlings' time through President Kufo to uh, late President Mills and to President Mahama. So we will have to make sure that the law is followed, the Constitution is followed. I and NBC would not want anything that is unconstitutional to be to be to, to be done. So, uh, so Ms. Adams, let me, Ms. Adams, so what I'm understanding from what you're saying is that uh, the need for consultation is unconstitutional, as the president has the sole prerogative to choose who becomes the uh, the next chairman or who not to become the chairman. Is that what you're I saying? I think the constitution makes it clear who and who will have to be be in the consultation mm. and council of state is broadly represented council of state has a regional representation one person elected from each region the election of the regional rep has representation from district assemblies so all assembled select delegates that goes to elect the regional rep for council of state then you have at least a former igp a former chief justice uh, a former uh, CDS, you have the uh, House of Chiefs also have their representation, and then you have other persons, other senior persons that will be appointed by right. the president. Mm -hmm. So you have a council that is very well, broadly represented by mm -hmm. high-level state persons, some of whom have served also very sensitive mm -hmm. positions. I see. So my wish is that we will we will use this institution it is like saying that then consulting the council of state or the council of state advising based on their consultation should no longer be taken i i don't know what people are, are so are what so, so mr adams you feel that uh that what the mpp is suggesting that is extra consultation maybe broadening the scope of consultation to include civil society groups etc etc is neither here nor there Oh, of course, civil society, if you have to speak to civil society, the Council of State has its ways that it works. The president has the way he has been working. What I do not want for me, speaking as a person, is this kind of as if pressure or siege. Mm. Mm. No, we have to, as if we should assemble parties, we should write to parties to the point that you hear parties threatening, right. which civil society groups should be consulted, which should not be consulted. How, do we even know the number of society groups mm. we have in this country? Which ones are we going to be consulting? Are we only going to be to consult some few that some people know or like? Or we are going to consult all? Mm. So we shouldn't even create too many problems for ourselves, for ourselves in doing a job that we know we can actually do and we have been doing in the past so well. And for which, me, that and, is my worry. And which, and which, and which you think the council, and, and, which, and which, Mr. Adams, which you think the Council of State can do much better, isn't it? Yeah, of course the Council of State. Right, I so I'll have you hold quickly, much, and I'll get a reaction better. from uh, Mr. Mark Maynard, who is still on the line. So, Mr. Mark Maynard, you heard uh, Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams raises a very important issue. He says that consultation is good, but the, the, council, of, the council of State is broadly represented by uh, different... Uh, 
groups uh, representing different uh, groups, actually. So the call for extension of this consultation from what you're saying, extra consultation to include civil society groups, appear to be some kind of pressure or siege on government, which will not augur well for, for, for the choice of electoral commissioner. Your, your quick reaction. Thank you. I think that as we speak in this country now, everybody knows the battered image and the sunken image of the electoral commission. Is that really, the, is that really the case? Battered and sunken image? Are you not overstretching was, it and becoming a, a bit unfair a poll, to the electoral a poll, commission? A research undertaken by the CDD mm. about some of state institutions, the electoral commission came under attack that it's not performing its functions and its duties. Well, I mean, everybody knows about that. Secondly, secondly, I think that we don't live in a static society. That's why former president, may he so rest in peace, John Atamelov, saw the need to set up Professor Fiajo's Constitutional Review Committee. Committee. Mm. And if you look at Professor Fiajo's recommendation, they said the appointment of the Electoral Commission should be burdened, should be burdened because he should be sent to parliament for a two-thirds majority, and the, the, the tenure of office should be reduced from the existing uh, 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 open-ended to mm. 10 years. Mm. Okay? So it's not a matter of we have done it in 1992, we have done it here, so the status quo should remain. I don't think that's the way society... So you feel that the suggestions run. of the MPP... Society should be run on dynamic basis. So things mm. are bad for the Electoral Commission as we speak from the, from the uh, 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 Supreme Court election petition, from the national health insurance uh, usage as, mm. as covering uh, 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 voter registration, use for voter registration, from the recent uh, uh, district assembly botched elections and the costs associated with it. Everybody knows that all is not well. So there is a need to broaden and get everybody on board so that by and by, the image can be risen, mm. and then the Indians can have the confidence which we need to move our democracy and election forward. Right. That's uh, what I'm saying. Right. Mr. Meno, I know that the MPP raised this issue about a month ago, and then on Monday you met an IEA platform. What were the outcomes at the meeting you held yesterday? Well, I, I, I'm speaking to you now from I don't know the outcome of that meeting. So I'm not privy to what transpired, but what I do is that I heard uh, Chairman Potofi and Chairman Afoku speaking on air to it that they have a deed for the deed to consult. Mm. I mean, it's just to deepen the consultation, starting from the, um, um, uh, the Council of State, whether they are represented from the regions or whatnot. It's to deepen for us to have a bigger confidence than what is existing now in our electoral commission and the electoral process. That's what we are looking for. Right. Uh, Mr. McMahon, we are grateful for your time on today's Big Story. We'll be taking uh, this discussion a lot more to one, uh, discussing the structure of the Electoral Commission and whether indeed, as it stands, we definitely need a chairman in order for the Electoral Commission to go through with all the reforms that have been recommended for it to undertake and also to perform its uh, constitutional functions effectively. We'll be getting Dr. Ransford Jampo of the IE on the line to follow up with this discussion. But uh, Mr. Kofi Adams, if you're there, now, uh, it does appear that as we, we, we work towards 2016's election, everybody is concerned that the, the irrelevant reforms that are supposed to take place in the Electoral Commission must be, must be done with a chairman in mind. Now, we don't have a chairman because Afarijana is due to phase out. And so, do you feel that the concerns raised by the opposition and other political actors for broader consultation is out of place? Uh, I don't speak to just concerns raised by persons, but I speak to what exists and what is on the ground. Mm. And for me, that is why I have had a problem the way and manner we've looked at our elections. We mm. made it look like the whole, the entire electoral commission is all about its chairman. Indeed, the chairman is a returning officer as far as presidential elections mm, is concerned. Concern. Mm. So the results he receives from police issues is put together and he serves as a returning officer. 
People have made it look like the Electoral Commission is its chairman. The Electoral Commission has commissioners and directors. And so political parties must take their work much more serious than they are taking it. The Electoral Commission chairman will not do the work for political parties. So if we fail to get right agents, we should not be finding the right agents in the appointment of a chairman or a commissioner. The commissioners will continue to do their work. Another point that is important, which we need all of us need to correct, so that we don't unnecessarily bastardize our institutions, is that the CI, a CI was put before parliament. The development of this CI involved many, many other persons, including political parties. Mm. It's stated in the CI documents that can be presented for registration. The CI is a legal document. So everybody who registered using an NHIA card was not engaging in an illegality until the Supreme Court did its ruling. So how do you say that the court electoral commission registered people with valid documents if image is bastardized? So is this the type of argument for which we are advancing that there should be broader consultation in selecting the chairman of the electoral commission? That a CI contains a, a, a document that is valid, it is presented and used because a court subsequently ruled that oh, this one should no longer be used. That means that the electoral commission is bastardized. So we should be consulted broadly in appointing each chairman. I don't see it that way. We need to be a little bit much more serious with our presentation. Let's allow institutions to wait. Right. Uh, I'm also that, aware yeah. of Professor Piajo's. Uh, constitutional review. That is constitutional review. And the constitutional review committee went round and solicited views from various persons. They have a document which they presented as final document. And out of that document, government issued white paper. And the implementation is going on. That, that the implementation for review of the constitution is ongoing. That process is ongoing. So why do we stampede this other process that is captured very well in our constitution with many other provisions. I, I, I don't see where right. all so, this so is So, Adams, from. you see these as a stampede on the part of the ND, M, MPP? Seriously, if it was very genuine, he would not be adding the kind of things that uh, you, you heard Mr. McMinn add in mm. his, in his mm. argument. Mm. I originally thought that it was genuine consultation people are talking about. And that explains why, like you quoted, maybe political party leadership, all of us agreed about consultation. Mm -hmm. Council of State can do it. The president continue to consult in doing all kinds of uh, appointments that he does. And that will continue. Or this one too, it will continue. But when you have surrogate groups issuing threats, and we will not recognize, and we will cause mayhem, and we will do this, then we, you realize that they are, you are setting an agenda right. just to create... Ms. Ms. Adams, I'll, I'll pause you there I, because I've, I've lost uh, Mr. Menu on the line. I need to raise him to just uh, uh, react to this. But I have Bernard Mona, who is General Secretary of the People's National Convention, PNC, joining, joining us also. So I'll engage him a little and then we'll continue. Mr. Mona, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good. I'm grateful you could join us. The NDC and MPP are concerned about, um, well, I'm, I won't say a candidate of their choice, but each of them have said that a, a consultation needs to be broadened so that at the end of the day, uh, the person chosen or the candidate uh, named will, will represent the interests of all the parties. Do you, do you care who becomes the next chairman? Does it matter? Absolutely. I think that we are engaged in a very unnecessary waste of space, waste of time and energy with this argument. The Constitution is very explicit and believers of democracy, the rule of law, must respect the Constitution. In particular, if you read Article 42, I think, too, it talks about the need to have a chairman and two deputies of the Electoral Commission who should be appointed? Mr. Mona, I'm, I'm sorry, but I mean, I do not see this as a waste of time and space. If a political uh, actor, for example, the MPP, is calling for an extension of the consultation if, to if include, for example, to civil society argument, groups. Mm. If you allow me to make my argument, you get exactly where I sit. Okay. 
and I'm sure that you just permit me a few minutes to do yes, so. Yes, I will. Mm. Fantastic. So if you read article 42-2, where it talks about the chairman, two deputy chairmen appointed by the president in accordance with article 72. You read article 72, which says that there must be a chairman of the electoral commission and that upon the appointment, the president in upon the air uh, in with the advice of the council of state shall appoint these two people that is all that is required now if you go to the appendix of the 1992 constitution there are oaths and the president swore an oath to uphold defend and protect the constitution mm. of ghana to uphold means to work within the remit of the constitution that's right and the constitution says the president should appoint the chairman upon the advice of the Council of State. Mm. Are we saying that the president should not uphold this one if we are Democrats? In any case, look, justice in this country can lead somebody to be killed in many ways. You know that. Yes. A chief justice dies. A president is to appoint a chief justice in this country. And the president does that in consonance with the provisions of the 1992 Constitution. We saw when Justice Archer died, Chief Justice was appointed. None of us raised an eyebrow because the president did what is right as far as the laws of Ghana are concerned. This was done by President Kufo. Four commissioners were appointed into the Electoral Commission in accordance with the laws of this country by President Kufo. President Mills appointed the chairman of the National Commission on Civic Education upon the demise of Larry Bimi, and therefore he did that in, con in consonance with the 1992 constitution. Two deputy chairpersons of the Electoral Commission who went on retirement were replaced in accordance with the constitution of Ghana. Mm. And therefore I find it absolutely unnecessary that true Democrats who know what the spirit and letter of the 1992 constitution is and knows what the president is asked to do by the constitution with some assault and say engage mm -hmm. in consultation before mm -hmm. you do an appointment b certainly cannot qualify for democrats in any case where do you start that consultation and where do you end it are you going to bring tigernos producers association of ghana are you going to bring tomato sellers association of ghana are you going to bring the ghana Journalist Association, Ghana Bar Association, Ghana Boxing Association, <laughs> Basketball uh, so, uh, Association so, of Ghana. Mr. Mona, Mr. And, Mona, and, so, and, and the list is mm, endless. Yeah, so when you start that consultation, where do you end it? Because mm. it is not only political parties that participate in our democracy. You, a journalist, will vote. You participate mm. in our democracy. So to limit the issue of consultation, then why not? Let us open up so that because we want to participate, we should put the issue of who becomes the chairman of the Electoral Commission on election so we can go and vote. Right. So what do you suggest that those who are calling for this kind of consultation do? They just cede to they the constitutional just, requirements. Let's, look, let's, let's allow what is enshrined in the constitution to pertain. If we don't want it and we want everybody to participate, let's open up. Let's repeal what is in the constitution mm. and let's say that we are going to do elections in the elections. All of us who are qualified to vote will vote. But Even in elections, we are restricted because you have to be 18, mm. you have to be of sound mind and what have you. People are still denied their right because who says that it is only 18 people, people of 18 years who are matured enough to determine the destiny of a nation. So I'm saying that if we have laws and the laws give direction, let us as Democrats respect it. Those who are calling for consultation, I don't know which groups should be eliminated and which groups should be added. Right, Mr. Mona, you've made an express point, and I'm grateful for that. I'm afraid uh, we have to move on with the discussion and uh, get to uh, get Mr. Dr. Thank Jampo you. on the line to continue with uh, the last aspects of our discussion. Uh, Mr. Kofi Adams, if you're still there, uh, Mr. Bernard Mona has made his point absolutely clearly that consultation is good, but in this case, it will be like uh, toppling over the constitutional process and then uh, substituting it with something else. Do you share that view too? Right, I think we, we don't have... Yes, much. of yeah, course. Okay. If, mm. if you listen to uh, Bernard's presentation, it's exactly my 
the concern that I was raising. Mm. That who and who are you going to be consulting in That's all right. these matters? That we are forcing and trying to insist that, and as if making it look like if it's only political parties. Mm. And do we just have even two political parties? Do we, don't we have more than even two, three, four political parties? Are we not going to be having parties even that will be coming up tomorrow? Will they also say that we were not consulted and so on and so forth? So I seriously believe that, yes, once consultation is good, it is already in the Constitution. Mm. That the president is not appointing alone. The president will be doing the appointment because a body set up also within the Constitution of elder state persons, that include persons who have served in various capacities, will be advising. And I thought that that is good enough, rather mm. than this overflowing that we want to engage this matter, this matter well, uh, with. All right, Mr. Kofi Adams, we're grateful for your time on today's big story. Thanks very much. Uh, Kofi Adams is the uh, national organizer of the ruling NDC. He shared his views there. So if you just joined us, we, we have been discussing uh, calls by the Opposition New Patriotic Party to uh, start broader consultation in the selection uh, of the next chairman of the Electoral Commission. Dr. Ransford Jampo is Senior Research Fellow at the Institute of Economic Affairs, which... Uh, Right, uh, I'm afraid that we uh, are unable to get Dr. Jampo on the telephone lines, but uh, he'll be joining us in the similar discussion on uh, PM Express tonight. My name is Stephen Enti, and that's where we draw the curtains for today's big story. We'll be right back with the Joy News Interactive. Do stay. <laughs>